Okay, what is up everybody? Welcome to another edition of Smart Guys, our ongoing pro wrestling commentary show. Today is Saturday, August 24th, 2013. I'm Dark Side Phil, and with me, as always, is John Ramba, the man. And uh, this week we've got a lot to talk about, uh, because we're coming off of the SummerSlam pay-per-view. WWE has officially started their new storylines, because John Cena is taking some time off. We're going to talk about that. Um... And, uh, you know, TNA coming off of last week's fake pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it, Hardcore Justice, and now the culmination of another storyline. There's a lot to talk about this week. Um, <clears throat> and I guess the best place to start would be with the, the SummerSlam pay-per-view, because that actually happened, you know. It did. First, before right. everything else. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, I did watch this pay-per-view. It's actually, uh, these days, becoming rarer and rarer when I actually do watch WWE pay-per-views. But for the second month in a row, I felt that WWE did earn my dollar. Uh, so I did watch this pay-per-view uh, and did actually do live uh, chat with my f uh, fans on the stream, wow. which, was, which was fun to actually do that. Wow. Uh, and when there are ongoing pay-per-views later on in the future that I, I want to see, I'll let you guys know, and then you can tune into the streams. Well, it's not really a stream, but you can tune into the chat and talk with me live during the pay-per-view. People like The Sims last week? People like The Sims. Yeah, um, for the most part, you know... It, it's did exactly how I expected it to do, you know, views-wise. Uh, but people, you know, they like the stream, they're liking The Sims, so we're going to attempt to do that when we can every month. Uh, I'm not sure when the next WWE pay-per-view is. I think it's Night of Champions. So it'll be coming up in the next few weeks uh, in September. And, and then uh, we got WWE 14 coming out. Yeah, and WWE 14 comes out the end of October. Uh, so whenever they decide to schedule that pay-per-view, we'll have to figure out how we can schedule in WWE 14. You like the roster? With that. The roster, I don't know. I mean, it's mostly classic. You know, what they've announced is the classic characters. Because uh, it's 30 years of WrestleMania. Uh, it's, it is what it is. Like, I, I think that'll be cool to go through every WrestleMania and do the high-profile matches. Honestly, I'm more interested in what's the current roster. Who's going to be in the game that's the current wrestlers? And they haven't really talked too much about Yoshi that Yoshi Tatsu. <clears throat> Where are you at? Yeah, they're going to have Yoshi Tatsu and, uh, you know, Justin Gabriel. But they won't have, like, fucking some high-profile guy, something. you know, or someone that you need. It was funny, it was funny we were watching that stream last week a little bit, the, uh, the reveal or whatever, or the flair in there, and there's all kinds of controversy came out of that. People were saying flair was, like, you know, not PG, and they were, yeah, they yeah. were upset with him, and we saw a little bit of that. He was, he was definitely doing a little... Uh, yeah, he was backing it to the girls of the crowd yeah. and stuff. Some people really enjoyed it, because it was, like, you know, it was, like, unscripted, raw, like, Ric Flair. Right. Um, I, guess the, I guess there was all kinds of... People upset after this <laughs> about this. Ridiculous. All right, so let's talk about SummerSlam. Woo! Uh, let's, we'll just go through the matches. So they had the pre-show match, Rob Van Dam versus uh, Dean Ambrose of The Shield for the U.S. title. Literally turned into exactly what we said it would be. It's a pre-show match. No one's expecting much. What happens? It's a good match until The Shield interferes. It's a DQ match. Yeah, we had that perfectly uh, on target. You know, well, this is chaos. <clears throat> you better order SummerSlam now. Before right. It's too late right right to see more chaos uh, I'm gonna be reading the results in the order that they're listed on the WWE app however these are not the actual order the matches happened which is kind of interesting I don't know why they're listing them in a certain order uh, so Natalia had a match against Brie Bella she came out with the Funkadactyls uh, obviously uh, the Bella twins came out together obviously this is all promotion oh in, in uh, that what's her name Eva Marie or whatever the hell her name is from from Total Divas so it's obviously just promotion for Total Divas the match was all right but no one really was expecting much. Natalia wins, big deal. It's just they're advertising Total Divas, big deal. Um, you made you want to watch it, didn't it? No, not you at all. You made I want to watch this. In fact, in fact Eva Marie has it caught was, my fancy. I must watch this it was, show. It was funny to say because SummerSlam directly competed with yeah, Total was, Divas. They ran at the same that. time. So it's like you have your pay-per-views at the same time as the show that you're promoting on the pay-per-view. Yeah, but they run that, that shit like a thousand times. So. Yeah, that's true. It's really on any time you want to watch it. It's on now, probably. Let's put it on while we do this. Let's keep it... Have it on the TV? Have it on. It's probably on. As we do this. It's probably on. It probably is. Uh, we had Cody Rhodes against Damian Sandow. Pretty good match, uh, but it was very predictable. Exactly what we thought would happen happened. Uh, Cody Rhodes goes over, so now he's getting a push. But where he's getting a push to isn't very clear right now. I'm, I'm kind of thinking... To nowhere. I'm thinking maybe they may... They, I don't know. Because I thought at first, I thought they were going to make him the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship because they kept saying that on TV. That, oh, he keeps beating Damien, so he should be the number one contender. But now they're going somewhere else with that, and we'll talk about that this week, what they're doing with that. It's a really weird angle. Wow. I don't know what they're doing with that. Um, Dolph Ziggler and Caitlyn defeat Biggie Langston and the Divas Champion AJ Lee. No one cares. Worthless match. Throwaway match. 
everything that we said about what it was going to be is exactly what it turned out to be. I don't know what they're thinking anymore. It was basically a waste of time. Uh, Bray Wyatt. This is actually the opening match of the pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. Bray Wyatt in the Ring of Fire match against Kane. And once again, exactly what we said. Oh, no, the fire's going to keep them out. No, it's not. They're going to figure out a way to stop the fire. And, of course, they do. The Wyatts find this asbestos blanket, cover the fire, come in, beat the shit out of Kane, destroy him, smash his head with fucking ring steps, and then they take Kane away. As if we don't know... wants to help Kane. It's like we don't know he's going to come back months later as a Wyatt inductee or whatever. Nobody wants to help him out. I don't know. It was bad. It, it, a lot of people are saying that this was a bad match for Bray Wyatt to have because this is like the first serious match he's had. And you want to see him wrestle. And really, Kane decimated him in the ring until the Wyatt family came in. And then they beat the shit out of Kane. So Wyatt actually looked bad in the match. And like, how is this a good debut match for the character? A lot of people are saying it actually deflated the character somewhat because he had a head of steam. And now he kind of looks like crap. Yeah, that's what's going to be. That's what the character is, though. He's going to not be very good, and then they want the other family, it's why they're there, they're going to help help him win matches, and that's right. pretty much what they're going to do. So. Uh, World Heavyweight Champion match, uh, Alberto Del Rio versus Christian, it literally turned out, again, I, we really much predicted the whole pay-per-view. It's supposed mean, to be a good match, though. It was an amazing match. Christian went over very well. He was hitting crazy spots, crazy reversals, kicking out of finishers, getting out of the submission move multiple times. Well, good for him. So, good for him didn't really matter because once again Christian wants one more match and he can't get it done. He beats Del Rio multiple times weeks earlier but when it comes time for the, the important match he can't get it done. Exactly what we well, said they was going to happen. They do this with a lot of guys. That's like their entire uh, program for any titles. Like, yep. They lose non-title matches. Oh my god, the title's in jeopardy. And then you have the title match and the guy is able to win. And uh, Terrible. It's terrible, man. It's terrible. So, it is what it is. It is important to note that Del Rio, during the match... Gets two black eyes. <laughs> two black eyes. Yeah, I think that uh, that was from before the match. He had in, like, a fight at a hotel or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, like, uh, the night before. Because <laughs> he came out, and he didn't look too bad. By the end of the match, his eyes were fucked up. Yeah, because he probably had makeup and shit, and then it came off. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. Uh... And all week, every time you saw Del Rio, his eyes were full of blood and just fucking Yeah, it was, so, it was some kind of, like, some kind of thing he got, an altercation he had involved in. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so now the two main events, and this is what gets me. They say, oh, we have two main events tonight. By the way, the World Heavyweight title isn't either of them. And you're like, well, then you don't value that title if one of your major nah, titles isn't a main event. That's the Intercontinental title from, like, 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, you're right. Know? You're right. It is. Yeah. It really is. Um, all right, so Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk. Immediately, everyone calls bullshit because before the pay-per-view starts, it's Paul Heyman. Oh, this is now a no-DQ match. Did I tell you that was going to happen last week on the show? Do you remember that? We, call, we called this whole pay-per-view. Like, we knew well, exactly what would happen. The thing is, like, Brock doesn't have normal matches. Right. So, I asked you last week, because I haven't really been paying attention. You, I said, is it a, is it a uh, gimmick match? You said, no. No, it wasn't. But then totally, I'm, yeah. I'm like, well, they're probably going to do the thing where they change before the match. This would happen. So stupid. Like, how, how can you advertise a pay-per-view, this is the match, and then minutes before the pay-per-view, we're changing it. This yeah, but you know, it. I think people would rather see it this way. But they, I, I agree. It's weird they didn't say that, though. I actually agree. I think more people would have actually bought the pay-per-view if they had fucking advertised it like but anytime that. anytime Brock is involved, you got to just realize this was going to be. I don't know what they were thinking. Why gotta, they, they didn't uh, up front just say this would be no DQ. I think it would have been be more beneficial. Brock's matches are always gimmick matches. So, uh, I have to say this. By far, of all the matches since Brock has returned, this was the best. I'm going to actually say this might have been... His best match ever, <laughs> except that he did have, if I'm remembering, he did have one really good match back when he was green, but with Kurt Angle. But I think that this was like I couldn't believe how good it was this match than his was. Better than his match with Hollywood Hogan. Of course, oh my god, are you kidding me? I mean, these guys killed themselves in this match. They were just going nuts. They were throwing each other into the ring steps, into the through tables, uh, multiple finishers. Reverse steel chair. The chair shots I saw in this match were insane. Working stiff. Insane chair shots. I can't believe both these guys walked away not, like, completely destroyed, okay? But I do have to say this. I was worried because Brock always works stiff. He does. He always works stiff, which is probably why they had to make the match no DQ. And I was worried that Punk got seriously hurt. The good news is he was not seriously hurt during the match. But I was worried because, like, at one point, 
Brock throws him onto like the announce table without removing the TV monitors and Punk hit the monitor. You could see a giant welts on his back from hitting the monitor. Yeah. It was exactly what we predicted. We knew he was going to fuck up during the match and do stuff. But it ended up being an insanely good match. The match ends when Paul Heyman basically interferes a thousand times. Paul Heyman keeps jumping on Punk, breaking up pins. Punk basically had the match won multiple times, and Heyman kept breaking it up. Finally, it ends when uh, Heyman distracts Punk, and uh, Brock gets an F5 onto a steel chair, and my God, did he literally landed right on the steel chair. So, it was a great match. Probably a match of the year contender, I would say. But Brock gets the win. So what are they going to do now? Do another one? Eventually, I would say eventually they will. Eventually, I think they will. That might be like the WrestleMania buildup for next year. Punk and, and Brock at WrestleMania. It annoys me that like the Punk has to be this guy though, because he's in his prime, you know. And these guys for the the past come in, and basically just he's got to put them over. Yeah. It's like who, what guy for the past did like Lesnar put over like that? You know, like when he fought Hogan, he beat Hogan. You know, and you know Rock didn't have some you know guy from 1985 coming in and uh, and uh, he put him over. You know, so right. You know, that's, a, that's the upsetting part about it, but again, they're going to do it again. He'll probably win the next one, that'll be it. Probably, yeah. I don't think they would do it multiple, like the Triple H four times or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so the main event, the match everyone was looking forward to, John Cena, Daniel Bryan, for the WWE title, an amazing match. And usually, I am a very, very heavy critic of John Cena's in-ring work. I have to say John Cena... Working injured, by the way, with a really messed up elbow, put on one of his best matches ever. And I do behoove you, if you are a fan of wrestling, and you did not see this match, and you are a critic of John Cena, you should see this match, because what you'll see is that when John Cena works with someone who's a very good wrestler, he can actually be on that level. The problem is WWE constantly feeds him crap, you know? And not to say that people like Mark Henry or whatever... Are, are, are bad wrestlers, but you have to have, if you want to have a champion that's convincing, you have to put him on that level. This match made me like John Cena, and we don't see this enough. That's, that's, my, that's what I'm trying to get at. We don't see this enough where you put John Cena in a situation where he can have a great match. This match had everything you can think of. It had multiple finishes. It had multiple fake endings. It had, you know, both of these guys killing themselves. Like, you could tell at the end of this match, these guys were fucking spent. This is the kind of match that I would expect to see in, in Ring of Honor. And they did it on WWE. And I was like, this was a great pay-per-view, if anything, because you saw two matches where these guys really worked hard and tried to prove that they were good wrestlers. That's all you, that's all you ask for as a fan, you know. When you, when you, when you watch something, you want, you know, want the guys to work hard and, and you feel like you got your money's worth out of the match. And it's what, right. you know, it's what they gave. So, so really, I have, I have nothing but positive stuff to say about these two main event matches. It ends up, the end of the match, of all things... You know, it wasn't predictable. It wasn't, oh, look, he's in the yes lock, or, oh, look, you know. It's, it wasn't anything you thought was going to happen. It was Daniel Bryan, after multiple finishers and everything, does an insanely stiff, shining wizard to John Cena's face, which John Cena already had a black eye. When he, he kicked him so hard, the next day on Raw, you saw his face was fucked up from this. So... Boom! Gets the three count, all right? So everyone's like, yay! And they give Daniel... Daniel Bryan wins, becomes the WWE champion. So it's the story, the Cinderella story. The little guy has won. He's become the That was your moment. The that top was, guy. That's the moment that you work for, that, you, that, that only comes around so often. Right. Many other guys have had this moment before. Austin, you know, whoever you want to put in there. That's the moment. And uh, it, was, it happened organically with the fans getting behind him. Right. The guy's been around. They, they mentioned he's been around for many, many years, working through all different places. And there's the moment... Leave it alone. No, nope, of course oh, wait not. Wait a second. It was here comes Kevin Nash. It's the same kind of th same thing again, in my opinion. Is what, is what it was literally what we said would happen last week. We knew they couldn't let him just win and just win, and that was it. Orton comes out, teasing he's going to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. Okay, walks all the way to the ring, but Daniel Bryan surprisingly is honestly he's challenging him. Come on, come in the ring. I want to wrestle which you. Which is good. Man. Which is good. Makes him look strong. Makes him look good. Triple H turns him around because he is the special guest ref, by the way. Pedigrees him. Or Orton comes in the ring. Easy win, one, two, three. And it's like, oh, my God. We knew this was going to happen. We knew it from, from the beginning. We said it last week. Like, our smart guys last week is probably one of the best prediction shows of all time. Because we knew exactly what WWE was doing in every fucking instant. This is why I didn't watch it. And didn't pay for it. Didn't watch it. Because, like, I knew something was going to go down like this. 
And had I seen this, I would have been real upset. And, like, I wouldn't have been able to sleep all night. Right. And I would have been, like, tears in my eyes. And I just I can't, I can't handle that at this stage of my life. It's too much stress. Now, you could, I know people are going to say, like, they're going to they're gonna build, make it bigger. They're going to make it better, right? They're going to build it to something else. But you already had the moment there. Right. You had the moment. And it reminds me so much of what I would see on Punk with Kevin Nash and all that stuff. It's literally the same thing. Because you had the moment. You have the moment. Let the moment be. Stick the winner. Right. And then you, they, they decide, we know better than everybody else. We're going to improve on it. We're going to add this. This is going to happen. And this is going to happen. And we're going we're gonna to improve on this whole thing. And it's going to wind up being better in the end. Well, that's, well that's, it didn't work out for CM Punk, did it? No, it didn't. And it wound up with Triple H beating him. And, and uh, not, they, they deflated him. He never got back to that point. We're, we're, I know he had the belt for whatever you want to say. He never got back to that point. That SummerSlam, that moment before Kevin Nash came out. I don't know if you know this, but Kevin Nash actually texted Triple H before the match and he stick said, the stick, the, stick the winner. Stick the guy. Stick the, <laughs> stick the guy. And when you, uh, when you want to talk about Austin, Austin finally won the title from Shawn Michaels. Like, right. That was the moment. It was fine. You didn't have to have someone come out and screw him out of the right. title there. The Ultimate Warrior didn't fucking come out and, and beat him up. Yeah, uh, the Iron Sheik didn't come out and, uh, <laughs> and whatever. So, uh. you know... That's that's one way to look at it. I mean, at the the other thing, the other side of it is it's good that they have a storyline now, and it seems like they have a, a direction, they have a plan of some sort. But as we've seen so often before, they lose track of the storyline. They, they they lose faith in the guy. Like so, everyone's saying now, Daniel Bryan's going to eventually win it, and it's going to be bigger than ever. But let's say like two or three weeks from now, the ratings go down a little bit. Right. Vince changes his mind. Who, you know, Dale, this didn't work. Oh, Daniel Bryan's not working out. Change the story. So, you don't know. You don't really know. You don't really know what's going to happen here. Right. You think there'll be some Cinderella story once again. So he over, overcame the odd once, became WWE champion. So now it's not Cena is, is in the mountain he has to climb. Now it's the corporate structure. The people who actually own the company hate him. Now he has to overcome that. But will he ever? Because will they just drop the story will they line next go, Will they actually go through with the, with it? Will they change their mind on it? I don't and know. at the end of the day, you had the moment, the magic making moment, right? That you let you you, you destroyed. You know, so there you go. All right, so Monday Night Raw opens with Daniel Bryan. Well, first with John Cena coming out and basically thanking Daniel Bryan, saying it was an amazing match, then showing off his disgusting elbow. Oh, my God, when he showed that, I was like, ooh, big giant, giant softball-like pocket of blood in his elbow. And basically saying he needs surgery seriously. It's really bad right now. And uh, he's going to be gone for four to six months. Which immediately when he says that, you're like, oh, now I understand what they're doing with Daniel Bryan. It's a filler storyline. It could be that. And in six months, John Cena will come back and just win the title back. It could be that. That very well could be the case. It could be we need mm -hmm. something for, you know, to keep us busy. Right. Daniel Bryan's going to fight Orton a few times, gets screwed every time, and then here comes Cena. Right. And he's the one that's going to finally defeat the uh, the new corporation or whatever, whatever the hell it is. <sighs> so Daniel Bryan comes out. And uh, basically, thank, you know, he was going to thank John Cena, but before he can even talk, Stephanie McMahon comes out. And Stephanie says, sorry about what happened last night, but Triple H just did what was best for business. And, uh, of course, then Daniel Bryan insults Triple H, says, you know, he's not the DX Triple H who used to fight the power, now he's just a corporate tool. And, of course, when you sleep with trash, you eventually start to stink, and, you know, all these insults and everything. This, is, this wasn't the way to do this, you know, like... <laughs> They screwed Daniel Bryan. Okay, you, 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 you're doing the Austin storyline again anyway. Right, it is Austin storyline. People, people rip on, ripped on WCW, oh, they're always trying to do the NWO again. And even at TNA, because they have Hogan and Bishop, oh, they're trying to do the NWO. Aces and Eights, Immortal. Look at these idiots. Always trying to do the NWO. WWE, all they, wants to do, all they want to do is redo the McMahon-Austin storyline over and over again with the corporation. Yep. Holding down some guy. Yep. And this is their thing. They try it over and over again, and this is what they're doing again. So. It's a recycled storyline. So if you're going to do it, do it, go all the way with it. Have Dale Bryan's barred from the arena. He breaks in. He's ripping pissed. He puts Triple H in the yes lock. He won't let go. Everyone's freaking out. Right. But it's just like it's usual business. He walks out. He talks. They talk for 10 minutes. You know, there's no real, uh, you know, <laughs> piss and vinegar there. It's just, you know, it's not the way to do it, man. He's got to be, he gets screwed. His, his, his movement, his, his crowning achievement moment was taken away. <laughs> yep. He's got to be beyond insanely pissed off. Right. And in a rage. You know, we don't want to see 15 minutes of talking instead. And that's what we got. That's what you got. And eventually he slaps the mic out of Stephanie's hand. Stephanie bans him from the arena. He willingly accepts it. But then somehow later on he comes back, which makes no sense. So he's banned from the arena at the beginning of the show. But then later on they announce, oh, he's back. Like, well, how did he get in? 
Never they explained. Told him, they told him to come out. Never explained. Well, no, that was later. Oh, okay. So it was never explained how he showed up. So let's talk about the actual matches on the show. We had Cody Rhodes versus Damian Sandow in a rematch from SummerSlam. Cody Rhodes wins again. So now again, it's like, okay, they say again, should he be considered the number one contender because he beat Mr. Money in the Bank twice? To which I'm like, what you're really doing here is you're deflating the Money in the Bank. You're basically saying that any Joe Schmo can win it, and any idiot can cash it in and win, and, uh, and you're basically deflating the value of the briefcase because they did this with Dolph Ziggler last year. Dolph Ziggler wins the briefcase, loses every match. And it's like, if you win the Money in the Bank briefcase, you're destined to lose, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what it is. If you win any, any kind of t- anything, any title or any anything like big, then you lose all the time. I don't know. So you think you're like protected. He's got the case. It's all right. He can lose all so the time. So we'll talk more about Cody uh, later on about when we talk about SmackDown. Paul Heyman addresses CM Punk. Basically says, Punk, if you, I forgive you. If you apologize to me, I'll let you back into the Heyman. You can be another Paul Heyman guy again. Really stupid. Like Obviously, Punk's not going to do that. But uh, that'll continue later on in the night. The Funkadactyls defeat AJ Lee and Layla in a tag team match. Nobody cares. Uh, it was kind of funny because all of a sudden, this is the first time where they really mentioned that AJ isn't on Total Divas and she's the Divas champion. They're like, she's the head diva, but she's not on Total Divas. She might be jealous of the people who are on Total Divas. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't think she is because she's a fucking wrestler. I don't all think she there. cares about being on Total Divas. She's not know? on it yet. We'll see what happens with season two. Season two, she'll probably be like the main thing, you yes. know? I don't know. Uh, so, The Shield... Uh, oh, that's right. So, this this was the beginning of the night of the domination of the McMahons. So, basically... Um, uh, what the fuck's his name? I never remember this guy's name. Brad Maddox. Brad, thank you. Brad Maddox. I can't remember his name. <laughs> never. I never remember. Brad Maddox says that apparently some WWE superstars went on a tweeting spree uh, last night after the McMahon screwed Daniel Bryan out of the WWE title. And, uh, and so he's basically not punishing them, but he'd like to address some of their concerns. So Dolph Ziggler, who likes to call himself the show-off, criticized Triple H and said that he never trusted Triple H ever since he worked for the company. On Twitter? On Twitter. That's what he says. Uh, he never okay, trusted yeah, yeah. that guy anyway. Yeah. So Brad Maddox says, well, that's fine. You like to show off. Tonight you can show off in a three-on-one handicap match against the Shield. So it's exactly what you expect. Dolph Ziggler tries to fight the Shield. Unfortunately, doesn't do too well. The Shield d- 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 destroys him, triple power bombs him. Obviously, he loses the match. Uh, Alberto Del Rio has a singles match against Sin Cara. This is one of the weirdest matches I've ever seen. So the match starts with Sin Cara attacking Del oh, Rio. Oh, he got hurt in the match. As yeah, well. Del Rio broke his hand or whatever. Del Rio, uh, you know, does a couple moves to him. Very little going on. So Sin Cara, literally, it's only a minute. Throws Del Rio out of the ring. Goes off the ropes, through the ropes, like, you know, plunging forward with, like, a Superman die, and ends up messing his hand up. I don't know if he... On TV, they said yeah, he, he dislocated Yeah, he broke his fingers or something, yeah. They said he only dislocated it. Yeah, something like that. But, uh, so he, he tells the ref, I need to stop the match. So the match ends, but Del Rio doesn't realize that that's what happened. So he starts attacking him again. <laughs> it was so funny. He's, like, repeatedly kicking him. Stop it. Stomping him, kicking match him. match is over. The ref's like, no, really, no, this isn't This isn't a work. It like, is my destiny. He's actually hurt. He's I like, no. Keep stomping your head. He kept stomping. It was so funny. And then finally they end the match, and Del Rio's all like, oh, okay. And he's still celebrating again. So his new thing is that he says he's the new hero of the Latino people. I am your role model because there are no heroes for Latinos. I do agree. I agree with all of that. I think it's true. So then that prompts Ricardo Rodriguez to come out. And if you remember, a couple weeks ago... Yeah, this ago, was kind of weird. Yeah, this is the weirdest thing that happened by far all night. You know, even with all the Daniel Bryan stuff, this was weird. This was weird okay? stuff, man. Ricardo comes out, and he says, Oh, Del Rio, you're no hero. You know, you look what you did to me a couple weeks ago. I, I now work for someone who is a hero. I thought it was going to be... Like, a couple of names stuff about Rey Mysterio, maybe El Generico, because they have, oh my God, this is going to be... It makes right. sense, because he doesn't speak. Right, right, right. So it's going to be him and... No. Nope. It's, of course, the hero of the Latinos worldwide, Rob Van Dam. So, He's a great role model for all kinds of people, not what? just Latinos. It's like, what? So I Ricardo know. now works with Rob Van Dam, and Rob Van Dam comes and attacks Del Rio. Yeah. And it's like, what the hell's going on here? Very, very weird. I like RVD. He used to have a, a manager, Bill Afonso. Yes. It always worked out well because he would give him, like, the chair. He would set up his, some of his spots for him. So, like, it works well for him to have a manager... 
But uh, I know it's kind of a weird, weird meeting. It's a weird combination weird of nomination. people, by far. Maybe it'll um, be good. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, the primetime players defeat the real Americans. And ex again, John, exactly as we said last week, you have one of the one of the primetime players comes out, Darren Young. He, he, he's gay. He admits it. So now, of course, immediately the WWE have to give them a push. I didn't see. Oh, I didn't see this though. They, they're pushing him though. Oh my God, to the moon. So they, they beat the Real Americans. Real, it's a good match. And by the way, this is the kind of stuff the primetime players could be doing if they would fucking let them instead of squashing them, which I don't know why they squash the Real them. Real Americans could be doing stuff too. I agree. Uh, so the primetime players uh, basically have a really good match. They beat the Real Americans clean. We'll talk about SmackDown, how they're still getting a push as well. Uh, oh, so the Big Show made a tweet. The Big Show said, oh. You know, I thought it was a travesty what the McMahons did to Daniel Bryan. So because he did that, Brad Max did puts him in. Did well, he cry? Did John Lord Ice cry? Oh, yeah, remember that? He joined, the, he joined the corporate thing then. Now he's against it. He learned, his, he learned the error of his ways. So anyway. That's good. The Shield in a three-on-one match against the Big Show. And by the way, they're all out in the ring at once. It's actually like a tornado tag match. Obviously, it's funny because the Big Show does actually look good in this match. He beats the crap out of the Shield, but the Shield do eventually get the one up. They do triple power bomb, which is crazy. They get him up and they triple power bomb him. Cerberus service code. Cerberus. Now I don't know what was going on with CM Punk. I don't understand what happened. Like what? Oh, was he going like on, uh, on Raw. He came out. He started going off on a fan for yeah the, for no reason. Just, he goes off on a fan. What was supposed to happen? Uh, I don't know why he did that. Got pissed him off. So he, just... so he goes off on a fan. First of all, fat guy in the front who's booing CM Punk. <laughs> During his promo. Then... He's a Lesnar fan. This prompts Curtis Axel to come out. And CM Punk and Curtis Axel have an impromptu street fight. With no ref. Like, I don't know what happened. What was that? I don't know. He had a crazy match with Brock the night before. Now they're making him have a fucking street fight with Curtis Axel. With no ref. So there's no winner. I'm just... I'm just flabbergasted. Like, what happened? What was that? Why did they, did they say he's not like cleared the wrestle or something? Yeah, he said he wasn't cleared the wrestle. Then he had one of the most brutal beatings I've ever well, seen. Then he started well, that, that was only the storyline. I guess he was, pretty, he was actually fine, but uh, it was kind of, I don't know, yeah. It was like, let's have a fight. I'm, I'm, I don't know what happened. What was that? I don't he know. Had a segment. It was very weird. Uh, Bray Wyatt has... He's going to beat up on Curtis Axel for the next several months until Brock comes back. Until Brock comes That's back. That's what yeah. it is. So Bray Wyatt defeats R-Truth in a stupid match. Like, who cares about this match to begin with? So, once again, another match where... Little Jimmy. You know, you're trying to build up someone, but you have him one night before, only win a match because all his people interfered, and then in this match, he defeats a jobber. It's like, I don't know. The whole, the whole Wyatt family thing, I think, is losing its steam, if you want my opinion. Uh, it's just getting started. We'll see. Uh, the Usos defeat three-man band. Who cares? The Usos, once again, going on there. Did all three of them, or just two? It was, uh, it was, I think it was just two of them. Okay. Yeah, Jinder Mahal and... Uh, Ginger Mahal? No, not Ginger Mahal. <laughs> the Miz defeats Wade Barrett via disqualification. I don't think anyone cares about this at this I didn't point. Want, I didn't want to see that. I okay, I'm just going to skip it. I'm not going to talk about it. And then, finally, the main event, Daniel Bryan is invited back to the arena... Uh, because uh, Randy Orton's having his championship celebration in the ring, and the McMahons are all, all yeah, celebrating the McMahons are with there. Him. They have the, the Shield is out there. Apparently, they work for the McMahons now. Yeah, that was I the mean, weirdest thing. They I think they the really. Uh, I feel like they really cut the balls off the Shield with that. They're just like lackeys of the McMahons. You know, like they're, they're the, the thing with them, like this dangerous group. Right. They come out of the crowd. We don't know what they're really trying to do here. Are they supposed to be here? The Renegades? No, they work for Triple H. Do whatever he wants. <laughs> and then you got the entire uh, locker room, the entire roster up on the stage. Except I don't, I don't think CM Punk was there. No, Punk wasn't. A couple other people maybe weren't there. Right. But See pretty much a lot, most of them were there. And then he goes, uh, okay, uh, Dale Bryan, why don't you come out now? Play his music. And then he just walks out. I'm thinking he's going to come through the crowd maybe. Right. He's, he's got some kind of plan. He's going to attack somebody. Just walks out. Hey, uh... Shield, since you do whatever I want, you're my lackeys, you're my jobbers. Right, attack Kick him. his ass, and he fights them off a little bit, eventually, you know, they get the upper hand on him. And then he goes, come in the ring, he crawls up, and then they, uh, RKO. And then RKO's him. Yeah. It's like... And, like, you know what, like, I don't even mind it, like, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to, you know, he's the sympathetic baby face, I get that, it's fine. I don't mind it that much, I've seen a million times before with the same corporation, whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. The thing that really pissed me off about it... Is the entire locker room is there? No one helps. Watching this, yep. And they're all so you know afraid of Triple H, and the pedigree which apparently can knock you out for twenty minutes like it did at SummerSlam. No one will help. So RVD won't help. He's there. All the three guys that fought 
the handicap matches against the Shield. They won't help, really. Big Show, Ziggler, all the other guys have had history with the Shield. They're all, they will not help. And everyone stands there. And I don't even think Orton really gets put over that much because no. he talks a little bit. Yeah. So who gets put over? Triple H and the, and the McMahon's. The McMahon's. It's them jerking themselves off again on the TV. And I don't <sighs> really want to be watching it. I mean, if you're, if you're into it, that's cool. At least there is a storyline. At least there's something going on. Right. But uh, I just don't want to be seeing this. I mean, even if Daniel Bryan eventually does beat them, he's going to be getting his ass kicked for several weeks. <laughs> I just don't, I just don't, it's not interesting to me. Hey, I'm yawning. I'm actually yawning talking about the segment. That's how, how you know. But what not, the hell? The other day, it's like it's not how you should have Daniel Bryan react to this. Like, just have him walk out. You know? Right. Oh, just come out. I'll trust them. If he came through the crowd, ran in the ring, starts beating the shit out of Triple H, then, every, then the Shield comes in, they pull him off. Right. They start pounding him. That's a lot more effective than me just walk out. That anger management was very effective, John. It was too effective. Was. Was Dr. Too Shelby effective. has to come back and undo <laughs> what he did. Dr. Shelby will be his manager from now yeah. on. And the whole the whole locker room stands there. Yeah. We will not, we will not help. We will no not, one will help. We will not challenge the gods that the McMahons are. We refuse. We can't. Uh, we can't do it. All right. So SmackDown uh, opens up with Randy Orton coming out. Basically saying, he is the new face of the WWE. He's a role model for everyone now. He didn't know that Triple H was going to pedigree Daniel Bryan, but how could he not capitalize on that? And yada, yada, yada. So as he's going on and on, Daniel Bryan interrupts him and basically says, you know, Randy, I understand how you, how you consider yourself the face of the WWE. Let's consider it. Look how pretty you are. Look at you. And basically he keeps calling him pretty and insulting him by calling him pretty. Is which, he? Which is kind of funny. Um... And he says, I'm not pretty, you know, and I could never be as pretty as you. However, I have a rematch, and I'm going to wrestle you at Night of Champions for the title. So immediately, both of us call bullshit, and we're like, if the McMahons don't want him to be the champion, why would he get his rematch? Why would they just say, no rematch for you, screw you? I don't know. The thing with, like, Austin, with Vince, um, Vince would always say, like, he makes me money, so I have to put him on the show. Right. He makes me money, so I have to, you know, but I will destroy him and all that shit. So, I don't know, like, why, yeah, why is Daniel Bryan allowed to be at the arena? Why does he have more title shots? Right, I don't know. But what I did hear is that a lot of people said that the way Daniel Bryan acted on SmackDown was how he should have acted on Raw. Yeah. Because he was a lot more fired up. Oh, yeah, he was fired up, and he even says, I wanted to say this on Raw, you know, thank you to John Cena, he gave me an amazing match, he brought out the best in me, and regardless of if that was just the one time to shine, at least I did get the WWE Championship, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the things that you would have expected were going to happen on Raw, he kind of says on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, he was. He was fired up all night. And that'll lead into later on in the night, which we'll talk about. Uh, Curtis Axel has a match with Cody Rhodes. And this is where I get confused. So Cody Rhodes is on fire. Beats Damian Sandow twice. Oh my gosh, you know, he's going to be the number one contender. They have him wrestle Co Curtis Axel. Paul Heyman interferes. So Curtis Axel gets the win. So now Cody Rhodes, steam, <laughs> deflated. Curtis Axel gets a win just because probably he's going to start wrestling CM Punk. And, in fact, it's announced that Curtis Axel challenges CM Punk to a match Monday night on Raw. And, of course, CM Punk accepts, so they're going to have this match on Raw. Okay. Dolph Ziggler has a singles match against Big E Langston where he goes over clean. So I guess that feud's over. Yeah, what's Dolph going to do now? Because RVD's fighting uh, uh, Alberto now. Well, that's the thing. RVD is now in a program with Alberto, so that means Cody Rhodes isn't the number one contender. And Dolph has nothing to do. So what's going to happen here? He's going to because Ricardo's his manager. <laughs> That's why. Right. All right. Uh, whatever. Alberto Del Rio and Christian have a really good match. And, of course, exactly as we said last week, Christian no longer can beat Alberto Del Rio. Regardless of the fact that he's beaten him multiple times in the past month, now that because it's important, couldn't do get the job done at SummerSlam, and he also can't beat him here on he's SmackDown. He's going to turn heel again. <laughs> And, no, he's just going to be probably a jobber, yeah. I would think. He's going to go back to jobbing, um, which is unfortunate, but, you know, that's what WWE loves to do. Uh, big Show. Too, too Christian. Oh, that's right. And, by the way, at the end, RVD comes down again. RVD, or Ricardo comes out, interrupts Del Rio's speech again about how he's a Latino hero. He says, you're no hero. Here comes a good man who has ideals and people look up to him. And RVD comes out again. And as he's distracted, uh, Christian attacks Del Rio from behind with a drop kick. And then RVD does a, uh, a rolling thunder to him. It's like, what the hell is this? Like, what's going on? Did you, uh, did you see the for the like, what is the Matadors or something? Oh my god! You know what that is? Uh, Primo and Epico, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, Primo and Epico are coming back as the Matadors. What the hell? Yeah. What the fuck? You could even tell. You could tell it was them. Yeah, yeah. They're mad. Well, they'll probably like they'll be the same name and everything. Or they'll just be. Uh... 
the it's Matadors. Little, it's a little Shaitana shit gimmick. The it's Matadors. so stupid. Like, what the fuck is that? Why are they doing that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right, so Big Show and Mark Henry have officially formed a tag team now. Because they want to take on the Shield. That's the storyline they're going with. So what the Usos are going to do I thought, in the meantime, I thought the Big Show was done with fighting the Shield of Teams because they turned... No. That just happened. Big Show's full fit, and he's teaming up with the person who he feuded with but he doesn't want, a year ago. He didn't want to team up with anybody anymore because they got no. straight at WrestleMania. No, now he's, he's, his, his vicious enemy from last year is now his greatest ally in the fight against the Shield. So let's just forget about continuity whatsoever. And uh, so Big Show and Mark Henry team up against... But they the wouldn't shield. want to fight them when they're not, beating the I'm shit. sorry, not the shield, uh, three man band. When they're so. beating the shit at Dale Bryan, they wouldn't interfere. <laughs> it wouldn't help. They no. interfere at Triple H. So, it's uh, Big Show and Mark Henry against three man band in a three on two match. Obviously, Big Show and Mark Henry go over big time here. They squash the three man band. And so, it looks like they're going to start having a feud with the shield. Now, here's where I talked about how the primetime players are getting a push. Darren Young has a singles match against Antonio Cesaro and wins. Oh, my God. So, this is it. To the moon, Alice, because he's yeah, came then, out. Then they'll dump him when like the story dies down, and you know, two right. months from now, like, all right, it's over. Right. So, anyway, Darren Young goes over Cesaro. So, anybody else then... on the roster have some private information they want to give out that we could exploit some way? Well, I have, I have, I have, I have three nipples. <laughs> oh, push him. Put him on TMZ. Make the guy ask a question about nipples. <laughs> so. All right, and then finally, the main event of the night, and this is weird because it all came together in a backstage segment. So. Vicky Guerrero, of course, trying to suck up to the McMahons, being the new GM of SmackDown, hates Daniel Bryan, okay? She's complaining about him in the back. Why did he come out and interrupt Randy Orton? How dare he? Wade Barrett shows up and says, listen. Why is he on the Diva show? I hate seeing him on there. Wade Barrett shows up and says, listen, I'll take care of him. But give me a match where I can really destroy him. A match that's out of his element. So the main event of the night is Wade Barrett against Daniel Bryan in a steel cage match. Holy shit. Okay? Steel cage. So, it's a good match, you know, and of course, you know it's going to be a good match when Daniel Bryan's evolved. But eventually, Daniel Bryan does win uh, and gets the clean pin on, uh, on um, Barrett. But then Randy Orton comes out, and, uh, and, le- and basically, Randy Orton was hidden under the ring the whole time. Yeah, it's so stupid, right? He comes out from under the ring and RKO's Bryan, and that's the end of the show. <laughs> I don't know, man. I you know, I don't want to sound overly negative about the whole thing because I think it's good that they have a you know for so long we say they have no purpose, they have no plan. You can tell they're, they're throwing things at the wall. Right. Here's some guy fighting John Cena. Here's another one fighting John Cena. That's pretty much what they do. So it's good that they have an idea of what's going on. But like so far, what I've seen is not don't execute well. Don't have the roster out there standing there like that. No reason to do it. Don't have Dale Bryan walk out there you know looking weak, like that. Don't have Triple H be the main focus. Make Orton the focus, and then maybe they help him behind the scenes. Maybe you don't see the McMahons that often. Maybe they're just pulling strings from behind. Right. Something like that. You know, and in the end, it has to be Daniel Bryan winning uh, for it to make sense. You know, you have to stick with it. It's, you know, don't go... If, if it's going to be again, you know... The way I look at it right now, if I had to predict what's going to happen, he's going to lose to a bunch of time, then John yep. Cena comes back, <clears throat> and he, he beats Orton eventually, whatever, WrestleMania, whatever it's going to be, you know. And that can't be it. That's gonna be really upsetting. So, well, you gotta learn. You gotta learn when organic things happen. Go with the flow of it. Right, and use it. Use it. Don't just don't just manipulate it for your own purposes, for your own end that no one wants. And it's insane that, that they the do the problem. same thing. Two years ago, they did the same thing as CM Punk. Yep. Because they think we're oh we have a creative team. We're gonna make this even bigger. It's hot. We're gonna improve on it. We're gonna make it better. But usually they 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 kill it. That's what happens. So hopefully it's not the case here. And when if Daniel Bryan does win the title again, it'll be as Big as it was then, right? I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to do that twice. So speaking of, uh, you know, deflating things, let's talk about TNA this week. No, I'm done. It's out. I'm You're out. done. You're not gonna talk. <laughs> I'm out. I didn't want. I didn't want. I saw the results. I, I'm out though. I'm out. <laughs> All right. So TNA this week. Let's talk about it. We have to. Um, well, first of all, TNA is like they're really having a lot of problems behind the scenes. They've released about more people. Oh yeah. So Cal Val is gone now, and uh, really. Now they're saying AJ Styles might be going. Yeah, I heard strong and, uh, rumors Mr. about Anderson that. Anderson might be going, and it's just they're really in a real state of uh, turmoil right now, all around. Huh. So, you know, I think it's affecting the the product too on the TV. So that's all right. It's upsetting. So speaking of, let's talk about it. Um, 
multiple matches on the show as usual. We have Bobby Roode and Kazarian versus James Storm and Gunner in an impromptu match. It was basically Bobby Roode, Kazarian, and uh, and Daniels were out talking about how look what we did last week. We're taking over the Bound for Glory series, and tonight will be no exception when Daniels has his match. Uh, and as they're doing this, James Storm and Gummer, Gunner, Gummer, Gunner come out and challenge Gunstorm. them. They challenge them. Yeah, Gunstorm. What the fuck? They challenge them to a match, and uh, they have this match, and uh, Bobby Roode and Kazarian win. Why? But take okay, a wild guess. Gee, I wonder why. Because of cheating. Duh. So they cheat to win. Earl Hebner doesn't see it. And uh, they end up winning the match. Um, <clears throat> so Bobby Roode actually asks Austin Aries to join their group. He says, I want you to join our group. You, you're, you know, you're, the, you're the odd man out. I tagged with you for a long time. I want you to join our group and we'll take over the Bound for Glory series. Okay. Uh, Sanjay Dutt has a singles match against Manic. It's a good match. And by the way, this is funny to what you know, you've been saying all along. As you remember, months ago, Hulk Hogan made this announcement that all X Division matches will now be triple threat. Yeah, it was horrible. And it didn't go that down was, very well. That was changed. Let's be honest. It did not go down very well. People that didn't really like bad. it. So now it's changed back to being singles matches again. It's hilarious because the announcers announces, oh, what a brilliant decision by Hulk Hogan. It's like, well, he's the one who made the decision to make a triple threat. It was only like, like yeah, two months ago or whatever. Yeah, it was only a couple months that this happened. So I don't know. Really weird. Uh, so Sanjay Dutt beats Man or uh, loses to Manic. Manic is the X Division champion, so it makes sense that he would do that. <clears throat> we got a four-way: Bradley, uh, Jay Bradley versus Hernandez versus Christopher Daniels versus Joseph Park in a street fight. And basically, Park wins, right? Well, he turns to <laughs> Rude and uh, and Kazarian do everything they possibly can to interfere with this match and make Daniels win. But what ends up happening is that I guess he gets a bloody lip or whatever. Uh, Joseph Park turns into Abyss again. Black Hole Slam wins the match. Eric Young's you know, it's thrilled. Like, you know what's real weird about this? Like, Abyss has a Twitter. It's Abyss has the Twitter. Yeah. It's an official thing. And he'll, like, tweet. He's like, good luck to my younger brother tonight in his match. It's, like, really weird to, like, read it. What the hell? Yeah, it's really strange. It's like... That is weird. But it's the same Abyss guy, tweets. I guess, is the story. But it's like... Very odd. So he... How does he turn into Abyss to tweet? And then turn back to just. They won't ever address that. Uh, I know, but it's just weird, you know. Um, Bully Ray. Now this is the weirdest thing. The so, bully. So as we said last week, Brooke Hogan is gone. Brooke Hogan yeah, is yeah. gone from TNA. We did a segment last week where he was talking to Brooke on the phone. Right. I love you, Brooke. I'll see you next week. I'll see you and next week. Like, you, they want you to think it's obviously it's uh, Brooke Hogan. Yeah. It's not. It's Brooke Tessmacher. Who even remembered that her name was Brooke? Honestly. Because they call her Miss Tessmacher. Because they call her Miss Tessmacher. So she's his new girlfriend. Who cares? Like it was just—it was basically a way to write Brooke out of the story. I line. swear to God, man, the way that they came up with this, they go, "Wait a second, her name is Brooke, just like her name is Brooke. We should do something with that." Right. And someone got paid to do to, for that idea, and they went with it. The thing that gets me That's is what's, what's the happened. purpose? There's no purpose. What's this, how this is going to help? It's because not. she's going to be in the group, I guess, and she's going to. It gives her something to do. Do something to do. And she's going to, you know, help. And it gets Brooke out of the storyline. Get basically. some eye candy on the show. And now Brooke will never be back. And no one will question. Probably wear some like denim shit. Oh yeah, she'll be shirt. hot, you know. It's, yeah, you know, just hanging out. Yeah. Anyway, Gail Kim versus ODB is a pretty crazy ass match. Now, if you remember yeah, ODB, that's the best thing on the show. It is. It's it was the, the best. For, it was. The knockouts is the best. It was the best wrestling on the show. Um, a rematch from last week where ODB went over Gail Kim clean. Now Gail Kim went over ODB this week. So now it's kind of like the rubber match is going to be coming up at some point, eventually, I'm sure. Um, Unless they have Brooke Tessmacher win the title, and then they go, all the aces need to completely control. They have right. the title or something. Oh, yeah. And all, then it is important to note that Austin Aries teased that he was going to join the bad influence. He's completely in between now. And then he turned cool. he turned on them and attacked them. He's, he's something got, you know, good to have going on because he, he rejected the main event mafia and he rejected the uh, right. them too. Them so. too. He's rejecting everybody. So that's, you know, that's interesting. But they, they deflated him too. They're like, now Chris Sabin is deflated. They bring people up and then you just bring them down. Right. Uh, Chris Sabin wasn't even on the show. He had a little package where he says, oh, he's so pissed that Tito interfered in his match but he'll be back. He's going to fight Tito. So stupid. Uh, Hulk Hogan will be back next week. They announced that. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Now. And then finally, the main event. Hulk Hogan's back from, you know, going outside the company, signing deals with 2K <laughs> to make money, regardless of, you know, how it makes the company he works for look, you know. Right. So, you know, he's out for himself, and he doesn't give a shit. 
The main event was the elimination, not the elimination match, the tag match between Main Event Mafia and Aces and Eights. Now, all night it was teased that Main Event Mafia was going to go out there only four, four on five. Now, remember, whoever gets pinned in this match leaves the company, so it's a high stakes match. So they're having, they're, they're called coming out. First, Aces and Eights comes out. <clears throat> then the Main Event Mafia comes out. And, uh, you know, that's it. It's teased. That's it. It's going to be four on five. All of a sudden, when the match is about to start, they play AJ Styles music. And AJ Styles walks out. And Bully Ray, who is, is like, looking on from the ramp, he's like, wondering, what the hell? What's AJ doing coming out? What is this? So AJ just stands on the ramp. And then all of a sudden, his music turns into his old music. So they literally play the new theme he's and back. the old theme. And he flips his hood up. And he does the thing. Oh, the phenomenal one is back! I can't believe it. That's what? cool. I like that. It was weird. It was it weird. Came for out of me. nowhere, though. It was like what prompted him to change. Yeah, there should have been at least some explanation. You know, why did he finally because, decide like, to go face? Because that was going to happen anyway. Right. And whatever was supposed to happen involving, you know, right. Kurt and all that. Right. It they basically it. all they did was they go, okay, just just fast forward to the Do end it now, right? Which doesn't make sense, which right. I agree with. But it's cool. Like I like AJ a lot. And it's cool that he's. Doing something. Right. But, uh, yeah, they just fast-forwarded the storyline. So AJ's yeah. back. He's now the phenomenal one. And, of course, he's the star of the match. He's the one who pins Devon. And so Devon supposedly is out. That's supposed to be true. Like he's leaving the company? That's Yeah, su supposedly that's, uh, that's that's truthful. Yeah, he's gone. So that's it. So that's that's it. That's impact for this week. Devon is out of TNA. So TNA's definitely in a, a weird position now. I will, you know, I like to see this, like, there's a lot of people really upset with them. They release so many people. But uh, if you're one of these people that will say, like, TNA should go out of business, I hope they go out of business. Oh, my God. I think you're off track because what happens to the other 50 wrestlers they have, what happens right. to all the other people that work at that company, they're basically SOL at that point. You yeah, know? Don't, sell it. don't say that. Don't say go out of business. If they go out of business, everyone's, everyone's screwed. And, and, and don't think WWE's going to take them all because they're not. They're going to take no. a few guys, oh. and they're going to bury the shit out of them. Right. They'll take five guys, maybe, maybe like, Storm and Rude, maybe AJ will get a shot. They're going to bury the shit out of them. And then they're going to have even more control over the wrestling industry, which is bad for the business in general. And if you go back to when they bought WCW, it was a terrible situation that happened. Right. Because that's what they did. They took some of the guys, they buried them, and we had 10 years of terrible wrestling. And we're still <laughs> trying to recover from that now. Yeah, we are. So you don't don't say they should go out of business. We hope they go out of business. Hope that they get better. Hope that they treat their employees better. Right. Hope that they turn things around. And, and that's... And, that's and give you something good to watch. Again, that's a point that we should make is people say that, oh, on Smart Guys, those guys, all they do is they say negative stuff. But understand, the reason we say it is because we want them to get better. We don't want them to fail. We don't want them to go out of business. We don't want to see people get laid off. We don't want to see these guys... We like wrestling. We like pro wrestling. That's why we watch it. That's why we do this show ongoing. And that's why we started the show to begin with. Remember, when we started the show, we were like, we're just looking for new ideas of stuff that we like. And this was a cool one. We don't hate it. We want these people to succeed. We just want it to get be better. And some of the ridiculous decisions that these guys make with the plot lines and things that they do, of course you're in a bad position. Look at the, the lame brain stuff you've done in the past year. And, it, again, it's easy for us to be sitting here on the couch and to be armchair quarterbacks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But being that we are longtime fans of the product, hello, maybe if you did things that weren't nonsensical, longtime fans would watch again. That's the kind of point we're making. All right. All right, so that's it for uh, Smart Guys this week. I do want to mention that next week there will be no Smart Guys because next week I will be on vacation, okay, in nice, beautiful Chicago, which we are frequent visitors oh, of, wow. actually. Yeah, I've been there a few times. So we haven't been there in a while. I'm actually returning this week to Chicago for vacation. Um, so in two weeks' time, we will return, okay? And I'm sure in two weeks' time, there'll be a lot of stuff going on with wrestling, although I may not even know what happened the week that I missed. We'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, I expect it to be slow. This week will probably be they're gonna, slow, They're going to slow it down big time, and, yeah. then, and then start, you know, when we get to the next paper, we start building it up again, but, you know. Okay, so... So, no smart guys next week. I don't know if John has any plans for anything in the interim. I don't um, right now. I mean, I got I got my hands full pretty uh, severely. Yeah, you're pretty busy with... Uh, all kinds of things. All kinds of... The schnoz hole and other stuff going working, on. Working, so. all kinds of... Uh, That's true. All kinds of things. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. Who knows? All right. So, in two weeks' time, we'll return. We'll recap everything that's been going on, and uh, we'll get up to speed. Hopefully, then we'll have a better picture of Night of Champions. We'll know when that's going to happen, so we'll know when we're going to do simulations of all that. Definitely, if you haven't seen the simulation matches of SummerSlam last week, check them out. They're live now on YouTube on DSP Gaming. And that's about it. So, thanks a lot for tuning in to Smart Guys. 
We'll see you in two weeks' time. Uh, until then, enjoy pro wrestling. See you later. Peace out. Arriva Durchi. Bon voyage. Goodbye. Sayonara. Apple teeny. Apple teenies for all. <laughs>